First, I'd like to thank Mr. Kirk Penner, who's running for the 3rd District House of Representatives. Mr. Penner is a businessman from Aurora, Nebraska. His opponents in the Republican primary are Larry Bollinger and Representative Adrian Smith. Second, I'd like to thank everyone for coming today. We have all of our junior and senior high students in attendance, but we'll only take questions from 7th and 8th graders. I, I ask Mr. Penner and the other candidates to come to Southern Valley so that our students can interact with the candidates that want to represent our area in Congress and learn the political process firsthand instead of in a textbook. As President FDR said, democracy cannot succeed unless those who express their choice are prepared to choose wisely. The real safeguard of democracy, therefore, is education. Let's learn from Mr. Penner today. Let's give Mr. W Mr. Penner a warm Southern Valley welcome. First of all, this is unique, and I want to thank Southern Valley, Valley Schools for having me here and maybe some other candidates here as well. But which you are seeing today, not necessarily because it's me, but for Mr. Reed to get almost every candidate to a school in Nebraska and come talk about issues that are on your mind is outstanding. So again, I want to thank Mr. Reed and Southern Valley Schools, and thanks for getting out of class and coming to the theater and listening to me talk, which is the cool part about it. So I'm going to talk about five minutes about who I am, and then I'm here to answer questions. So the rest is for you, and I'll answer the questions that you have. I'm going to do a little uh, audience participation, which I hated growing up when I was in high school and middle school, but it's, it's painless. But let me tell you who I am. My name's Kurt Penner. I'm from Aurora. Does everybody know where Aurora's at? Yeah. Okay. I manufacture bathing systems for nursing homes. So, if you go to Christian Homes in Holdridge, or, oh, Oxford used to have a nursing home at one point. Now, in each wing, there's a central bathing area where grandma or grandpa get their baths. We make those specialized baths. We started in 19, excuse me, 2001 with no tubs in any facility in the United States. And today, we are in 49 states, every province in Canada, South Korea, and Mexico. So I'm a small business owner. We own uh, a plant in Aurora, Nebraska. We have 15 employees, but we started from scratch. I have a wife who is a breast cancer survivor, and she normally comes with me on the road, but until basketball season's over, she's going to stay home my son, Henry. I have a daughter that uh, attends college at the University of North Carolina Greensboro, where she's studying finance and accounting, and she also is the setter on the volleyball team. And I have a son, Henry, who plays basketball at Aurora. We just qualified for state, uh, and he will be playing basketball at the University of Nebraska at Kearney next uh, winter. So, quick question. How many of your parents own a small business. Keep those hands up. How many of your parents work for a small business? That should be employees less than 50. How many people's parents work for a company less than 50 employees? Should be basically everybody in this auditorium. Right? If you're shy to raise your hand. Okay? You can put your hands down. That's what I am. I'm a small business owner with 15 employees that knows health care. I know accounts payable. I know accounts receivable. I know what's going on with regulation from the federal government. Now, how many of your parents out there are career politicians? Hmm. So the first question I asked was how many people have, were uh, parents work for small businesses or own a small business? A lot of hands went up. Those are the people we should be sending to Washington, D.C., because they are the ones that know what's going on with their employees and with small businesses. Small businesses in Nebraska drive the economy. Then I asked you, anybody here here was a career politician? Nobody raised their hand. So why are we sending a career politician to Washington, D.C.? 
when he doesn't know what all the rest of us are going through. And that's what I'm up against. I'm a small business owner running against a career politician. Okay? Small business owners know what's going on in the state of Nebraska, and career politicians do not because they spend their time raising money and running for re-election. So with that, that's my five-minute spiel. I didn't want to get any, any more into the politics side of it. I want to get questions from you and see if I can answer them in a way that you like. So we'll see. I'll give you my opinions. I'm not going to stand up here and hold on. I'm going to give you opinions. I'm not a politician. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I'm a small business owner. So with that, I'll let you come up.
school, city, and health care. Um, so it's a tough one. I don't know if the federal government can help a small town grow, but what the federal government can do is get out of the way so the small towns can grow, and that's what I'm for. Thank you. Back up. Um, how much did it cost to build Kirk Kenner basketball? <laughs> okay, so how much did it cost to <laughs> build a Kenner athletics court? We have a basketball court next to our manufacturing plant. Not my money, it's my dad's, and he did not tell me about that. <laughs> and if I knew, I probably wouldn't tell you anyway. But I, I honestly do not know how much that facility cost. Has anybody been in it? Or were you just online? So we have, everybody needs practice space, right, in their school for volleyball, basketball, everybody needs practice space. My dad said, for short practice space in Aurora, let's build a couple basketball courts. So we build it next to uh, our manufacturing plant. It's a very nice facility, but I don't know, a lot. <laughs> I think local school boards should make that decision as opposed to the federal government or the state government. Let the local, I'm on a school board in Aurora, Nebraska, and I know that if I ask teachers if they would like to carry, not everybody, but just some, would you like to carry to protect our students, they would. Um, but that's really a school board decision. It would be Aurora school board decision if it was made. My name's Jenna. Um, if you weren't running for Congress, who would you be voting for? It's a good question. Uh, I would not vote for the incumbent. I will tell you that. So if there was somebody else on the ticket, if I wasn't running that I liked, I would vote for that person. But I will not vote for the gentleman that's currently in the spot. He's been there too long. He wants to be there until he retires. In fact, in 2006, he said, I want to be in Congress as long as I can. I want to get elected and stay there until retirement. That is scary. Very scary. So I would not vote for the incumbent. I'd vote for anybody else. If I didn't like him, I wouldn't vote for that. I always go and vote because I'm informed. But I would leave that area away. Hi, my name is Punta, and I'm running for what are you going to do about health care costs? Health care costs. I mentioned that it's a great question. It's the number one issue. When I travel around the state, I'm heading to Scotts Bluff after this. Our health care costs as a manufacturing plant went from $11,000 a couple of years ago to over $23,000 a month. I just mentioned that a couple of minutes ago. We can't afford to do that as a company anymore. But we also don't want to kick our employees off our group health insurance and put them on the exchange or Obamacare, as they call it, because there's only one health insurance company in the state on the exchange anymore. And my understanding is that is pretty shaky, too. So my answer is not to get the government more involved, because when the government got more involved, it went from $11,000 a month for me to $23,000 a month for me. I would introduce markets. So, capitalism. So let's get our drugs from Canada. Okay? You can buy drugs a lot cheaper in Canada than, than you can in the United States. That's just a fact. Get the market involved. Let small businesses pool together. So like businesses like me and my neighbor at the Aurora National Park, and somebody down the street can pool our employees together, give us a bigger number, and that way our, our rates would be lower. That would be, those would be two ways. I talked to a doctor yesterday who said he had a woman in the hospital because she was pregnant, and the pill used to be 50, excuse me, the shot was $50. The next day it was $30,000. It's got to stop. When he talked to me, he said, you've got to get big pharma, the big pharmaceutical companies, out of the control of the, medic, of the medicine prices for prescriptions. So that's another one. We've got to control the big pharma lobbies. Okay. Hi, my name is Amaya, and who inspires you to run for 
Who inspired me to run for Congress? Uh, my opponent did. I'm just very competitive. Okay? And when you run a small business and you get beat on and beat on and beat on and nobody in Washington, D.C. is listening to you, you step up. And so actually my opponent encouraged me to run. It's actually been a three-year decision. We've looked at decisions he's made over the last three years and they're not good. And during this campaign of mine, we've been uh, exposing some of those votes he's had. But really, it's my, my competition. If you say, hey, I'll be here another two years, and I'll leave, he probably wouldn't have ran. But he wants to be there until retirement. Scary. Very scary. One main thing? Yeah. How old are you? I'm Can you vote? No. Okay. You can't help me. So I need more votes in my uh, competition. The number one thing that a competitor disadvantage to the incumbent, which I am, is he has all the connections and he knows who to talk to. And so what helps me is name recognition. Has anybody seen any commercials on channel 13 of me or my wife? During the news. Anybody watch that? <laughs> Any, how about the teachers? Any teachers seen any of the ads? Okay, some. Name recognition is key. Because my opponent's name has been out there for 12 years, so they're going to see that. And if they don't know he's done something wrong or needs to go, they're just going to next that. So name recognition. So when you go home, tell your mom or dad or whoever to vote for Penner. Thank you. Hi, I'm Brianna Russell, and I'm running for Am I worried about any of my competition? No. <laughs> I'm not. My main concern is getting my name out. If you put me side by side with all the competitors and you're going to see them, which is amazing, that you get to see every candidate for the most part running for Congress. Nobody touches me because I have the same experience as every one of you. I'm not a career politician, I'm not an author. There's some other interesting things. But I'm real Nebraska. I want to put Nebraska on the map. And nobody can do that like I can. So I'm not worried about my competition. I'm just worried about getting my name out there. Do I like social media? I'm on my phone constantly. Follow me at Kirk Penner. Got it? Let's see. Penner for Congress for Facebook. And my web page is kirkpenner.com. I'll tell you a little story about social media. I was very reluctant to get on Facebook. From a candidate standpoint, I've had a personal Facebook forever. And once you're on Facebook, you can never get rid of the page. Everybody understand that? It's there forever. So, Kirk Penner's been out there forever. So, Penner for Congress. Um, been up for about three weeks, and that's on my Facebook page. And I've been boosting those ads. Social media, you see, has anybody ever gone on Facebook and boosted an ad or boosted a page? It's not very expensive, but I got a video of my wife up there that went from 2,000 views to 10,000 views in a hurry. And the more I can show my wife and my campaign and get the name out, the better I am. But what I find is Twitter is a younger crowd. I don't do Snapchat. I don't do that. My kids are, they snap each other. Right? Everybody snap each other? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. Okay? And there's one other, Instagram. I have an Instagram account. That's just too hard for me to handle. But social media is key. At Kirk Penner. Give me some followers. At Kirk Penner. Penner for Congress. KirkPenner.com. Give me a follow. I probably won't follow you back. Well, okay, not, I don't know. I probably not. I, I sure can. I just, it looks a little creepy. So I've got kids. My son would say, Dad, don't do that. Hi, my name is Kailia, 
And I was just wondering, what do you stand for? What do I, I stand for the National Anthem? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I mean that. I mean, it is a good line, but I, I do mean that. My country is very important to me. But I stand for third district values. I stand for smaller government, but I stand for also taking care of those who need help. I stand for smaller taxes. We deserve more of our own money in our pocket, but we still need to take care of our schools, our hospitals, and those in need. So I stand for third district Nebraska conservative principles, small business, middle class. Hi, I'm Jessica, and I was wondering what your opinion on President Trump's wall is. Her question is what I think about the wall. Long, long answer. First of all, we need to understand that the illegal immigration coming into the United States is driving wages down. The illegal immigration drives wages down. Number two, I have friends that have been here legally, worked their rears off, missed family, paid their dues and came in here legally. And they are not happy with the illegal immigrants coming across whichever border. Um, third, without a wall, without a border, you have no country. So I'm 100% for the wall. Okay? <laughs> Biggest poll model. You know, I, I have grown up in a very athletic uh, family. I had a brother who played baseball at Wichita State. I had a sister who played volleyball in Memphis State. I played a little small college basketball at Nebraska Wesleyan University. And I really think, although my brother has his issues, it's my brother. Um, he was a phenomenal athlete. When I golf with him, we don't have fun. He says, that we're not golfing to have fun, we're golfing to compete. And uh, so we'll be in the nicest places in the mountains. And somebody will say, hey, what a view beautiful view. That's awesome. And he'll say, no, it's not. We're here to compete. Let's just play some golf. So I like that about my brother. He's uh, one of the best athletes ever in the state. In fact, he's in the Nebraska uh, State Hall of Fame uh, for his athletic ability. There's my brother. <laughs> Hi, my name's Elliot. What do you think of President Trump's tweets? <laughs> okay, what do I think about President Trump's tweets? He gets followers, doesn't he? And, uh, you know, if he wants to tweet, he can tweet. I would tweet a little bit different. Uh, he's, make no mistake, he's an outsider. And people in Washington, D.C. do not like outsiders. But he gets a lot done because he is an outsider and he's not going to do play the same game that they all play in Washington, D.C. A little bit what I bring. I'm not going to play the game. I'm going to be in Washington, D.C. for 10 years and I'm coming home. And let's just make an agreement. 10 years from today, or 11 years from today, I'll come back and we'll be the same assembly. Because okay? I'm not saying there forever. You have my promise. It's on stride. It's in every newspaper. Ten years and I'm coming back. Trump could do better with the tweets, but Trump is Trump. I'm Aubrey, and I want to know what your favorite childhood memory is. My favorite childhood memory. My wife says I don't have a childhood, so because uh, I spent my entire life growing up at sporting events, and it's a theme within me. It's a competitive theme. But my favorite memories growing up is going down and watching the College Bowl Series, which my brother played in, or going down to Texas to watch Wichita State play Texas. So it goes down to my childhood memories are those of my family and watching my family members compete. I just come from a very competitive family. I'm Colby, and how are you going to help me grow our national debt? National 
right? That was your question? That's a toughie. But we are spending money in Washington, D.C. that is out of control. We spent $255 million for a highway in Afghanistan that's going to crumble in the next five years. We spent $15 million to train Walmart cashiers in Mexico. We spent $9 million to help tourism in a far, far away land. I can't think of the country right off the top of my head. They are getting plenty of our money. We need to stop spending. And if we don't, we're going to have an interest rate crisis here in the next couple of years. So, my pledge to Nebraska is, once I'm in D.C., whatever that budget is, I know it's $4.1 trillion, I'm not going to vote for a budget over $4.1 trillion. But they don't, so it doesn't take very long to get to a balanced budget if we do that. But you have to understand the amount of pork that's in the bills currently in Washington, D.C. I just rattled off three of them. I could give you 150 of them. Seriously, $15 million to train cashiers for Walmart in Mexico. Why? Then what happens is they're short on revenue, so who do they come tax? Small business owners and the middle class. Okay, so they need, they get plenty of our money. We need to start cutting. Thank you. Well, it better be good, because I'm one of them, right? And every one of you, although you didn't know for sure, your parents own a small business or work for a small business. Statistically, it's just a fact. So small businesses grow the economy in Nebraska, farmers, ranchers in particular. We are the ag state, we are the beef state, we produce corn and soybeans. So, we have to take care of our small businesses. I think the tax cuts that came in with Trump were good, although my opponent had nothing to do with it. I won't go into that now. But they were good. So the small business index in the state is pretty optimist, uh, pretty optimist right now. And I think it's going to look okay. But we've got to get in control on spending. My name is Brian. Have you tried to represent another state before Nebraska? I have lived in uh, Nebraska all my life. So. Hi, my name is Logan. What is your main goal in elected? My main goal in elected, and this is important, I'm not going for myself. I'm going for you. I'm no different than you. I'm a small business owner. I have employees. But I want to take the third district national. I want everybody to know, to know in the United States that the third district feeds the world. How many farm family kids do we have here? You guys feed the world and nobody knows it. We have to tell the story of the third district. And if we disagree with party leadership, we need to disagree. Because if we don't take care of the third district, the world starves. We need to take care of ag in the state. All the things I'm going to get accomplished. Okay. So I've talked about taking care of small business, taking care of the middle class, cutting spending, all things you can do if you have a voice and you have the will to do it. The fourth thing, a lot of people don't think about this, is there's a revolving door in Washington, D.C. Let me explain that. This is what happens in Washington, D.C. So I get elected, I go to Congress. I decide not to run anymore. And I go and start working for a company that I helped regulate while I was a congressman. It's called a revolving door. Not only does it help, doesn't all although uh, what I say, it happens with elected officials, but also happens with their staff. And so you may have a staff member of mine in Washington, DC, that will work for me. I leave, 
and then they go work for a company that we regulate. It's called the revolving door, and it needs to stop. It's a good old boy network. It would help corruption. If you would solve corruption or end corruption in Washington, D.C., you would solve 99% of all the problems we've discussed. Corruption is rampant in Washington, D.C. Thank you. My name is Ryan Brink, and I want to ask if you're a Husker fan. Yeah. <laughs> I am a Husker fan. I'm also a Kansas Jayhawks basketball fan. <laughs> And a Creighton basketball player. Yeah, I'm a Husker. I'm glad Scott Frost is coming back. I'm a big Husker football player. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you get Scott Frost to endorse me, I win. I win. It's all it takes. Hi, my name's Elliot. When you work with other political parties, it was right in the I will do whatever it takes for the third district. That means I have the same ideas as the Democrat on the other side of the aisle and we can work things out, yes. The district is more important than my party. And whatever we can do, we'll do it. So yes. Back to the school shooting question. Back to the local school boards. You've got to give the control back to the local school boards. Um, whether it's the amazing amount of testing that's been forced down everybody's school board and education system, we've got to let the local school boards decide if they want to do it. So if you want to have a school that has some people with concealed carry and some that aren't, um, that would be the choice of the local school board. Try and change the culture is what I would try and change. If we had an issue like this, look, this last uh, tax bill that came out, that was actually awful when it left the Ways and Means Committee. The first bill was awful. Did nothing for small business, did nothing for the middle class. I would be on Channel 13, I'd be on Channel 4, I'd be at the Party Hub, I'd be in Oxford, I'd be in Cambridge, I'd be everywhere telling everybody that we got to get this changed. So, yet, how I would change Washington, D.C., I would be vocal. Um, how do you juggle your responsibilities to your company and to the election? Good question. Everybody hear that? How do, you, how do I juggle all my responsibilities? Well, basically, I'm doing not much work, very little work with my company. Um, we've delegated some of my duties to other people. I still do payroll, because not everybody needs to see what everybody's making. I still sign the checks for payroll. I do some of the accounting. But other than that, the sales, I don't do any more. Uh, Greg does some of that. For me, but Greg is also on the road with me. So as the election gets closer and closer, he'll do less, and I'll do less. It's running. If you weren't running for Congress, what would be your main goal in life? If I wasn't running for Congress? My main goal in life is to build my, my company and raise a good family. Not necessarily that. Raise my family, build a company, pay your family, everything after. But my main goal is not to be in Washington, D.C. So 
once I go to DC, it's not like I'm going to stay there until I retire. You guys heard that before? <laughs> yep. Okay. In 10 years and I'm coming home. So it's not a, it's not a main, I mean, it's a goal, obviously, I'm running against Adrian Smith. Uh, but my goal is to have Adrian. Why do you feel being right for small schools such as Feels awesome. Um, you have a unique school here. This is one of the best, I call it the theater, that I've seen. Aurora's got some nice facilities, but this is pretty nice. Uh, Greg would have to agree. Greg was an activities director of public schools for a long time. And so to come to the bread and butter, Nebraska, which is the third district, to come to be able to talk to the students. It was wonderful, and I appreciate it. Hi, my name is Cynthia. How long have you been teaching How long did it take? Well, we started with our own product in 2001. So, like I mentioned, we sold, we had no tubs out there, and now we're in 49 states. So, it'd be it probably took a good 10 years to get comfortable, but it was a struggle. I was on the road. I missed my family. I didn't work with us at the time. But I was all over the place. I was in downtown Peoria, Illinois on 9-11, which you guys are all too young for. That's where I was at. Hi, my name is Punto. Why should my parents vote for you? My parents should vote for me because I'm just like the parents. Small business owner, I understand what's going on in Washington, D.C. Or excuse me, I understand what's going on in the 3rd District. I want to take the 3rd District to Washington, D.C. I don't want people from Washington, D.C. telling us what to do in the 3rd District, especially those who have never had a real job with real consequences in their life. Hi, my name is Jennifer. Why should I vote for you? What is the first issue you uh, the first issue I would bring up is the revolving door. I'd stop the revolving door and I would go right to spending. We have to let people know all the unbelievable excess spending, some of the examples I gave today. Uh, and we got to get a handle on spending. Otherwise, your future and my future and my kids and my grandkids' future is in doubt because I have a concern with the Interest rates go up in a world of hurt. What do you think about the new gun laws? What new gun laws? Like the bump stock and stuff. You know, I'm a Second Amendment guy. The Second Amendment is kind of there to protect all the other amendments. And so I want the ability for me to. Um, purchase guns legally because the bad guys will always get the guns and if they get the guns I want to be able to protect myself. Simple. Is there a way you can never run the box? Or run crops? If I run again? Well, if I go there, if I get elected here in May and then win the general, I would see how those two years go before I would decide. Um, what are your hobbies and what do you like? What are my hobbies? What do you guys like to do? Sports? That's all I heard of sports. Anybody else? Sports. Hunting. What I would, uh, what I did before I had kids was I did a lot of hunting, I did a lot of fishing, and I hung out a lot with my friends. Those would be my hobbies. Once I had kids and I got to a certain age, my hobbies, my kids actually became my hobbies. I have hunted and fished probably twice or three times since they were able to compete on travel teams and everything. But my son's got four years of college basketball left, and when he's done, then I'll start hunting and fishing again. But I love watching my kids compete. And I'm not the guy in the stands that's screaming and yelling at the refs. I'm the guy in the corner 
just sitting there and soaking in it. That's what I just made. A lot of it, I'm mad at my son because he's doing things wrong, but I'm not up screaming at him. I'm just sitting there watching the game. <laughs> what is the biggest fish I've ever caught? The biggest fish I've ever caught was a six pound walleye up at Pawaki in Pierre, South Dakota. Did I answer that? My favorite sport. You're getting to some good questions now. My favorite sport is basketball. But I love watching my daughter play volleyball. Volleyball. Great sport. Very fun to watch. This question is, if I don't win this year, would I run again in two years? And I'm not ruling that out. But I don't like to lose, and I rarely lose. Okay? So I need your support. Go tell your parents to vote for Kirk Penner. What's my Twitter? At Kirk Penner, right? Penner for Congress, KirkPenner.com. Did I walk past you? So, my class is school shooting thing, but um, what if Kim Jong Un decides to meet us? What if Kim Jong Un decides to meet us? Well, How about this for a I'm going to give you my first political. Have I answered every question honestly? You can give me straight answers. I'm going to give you a political answer. There, there are people that know much better than I do. I'm a small business man in Aurora, Nebraska. They're experts. So I'm going to answer that question. That's my political uh, answer. How tall are you? How tall do you think I am? He says 6'2. Six Close. With shoes, you know, everybody wears shoes, right? For the most part. Always give your height with shoes. Because you don't walk around here. I'm 6'6. How much do I weigh? <laughs> I, I, uh, some people will say like buck 85, 185, but I'm 215. It gets, starts to go to your belly after 40. So heads up. What size shoe? 14. What would be, if elected, what would be my first comment to Trump? You know, I respect and honor the presidency. No matter who's in there, I would shake his hand and say, nice to meet you. And that's probably what I would do. And I would do that regardless of who's in office. Even if it's the guy before Mr. Trump, or the guy before, before. Shake his hand and say, thank you. Shot and done. I'd rather sit in a blind goose pit or duck blind and shoot 
and send me and have fun with my friends all day. Egg sandwich with bacon and cheese. Or most of the fun having breakfast in the line and then shooting some ducks and geese. How old are the kids? How old are my kids? Uh, I have a daughter that's 20 and a son who is 18. You can follow them on Twitter and Snapchat. I don't know their stuff, but uh, it's Henry Penner and Allison Penner. Henry is much more interesting than my daughter. What is your favorite thing in life? Ducks and geese. subject in school. And I'm going to segue that into something that's kind of dear to my heart. I was not a great student. Not everybody in here is a great student. My kids are 4 students. I'm about a 2-8, 2-9 student because I was lazy. I ended up going to college, did my four-year degree at Nebraska Wesleyan. But not everybody in this room, and this is my soapbox, not everybody in this room is a four-year college type of individual. If you don't want to do the four-year college, I'm a huge proponent of a two-year community college. Find a trade that you like. Find something that you love. Don't get yourself $50,000 in debt. Go to a community college and learn a trade. So I've got five jobs in my manufacturing plant that pay good money, and all you need is a two to your degree. So don't think everybody needs to go to a four-year school. Find something you love, go to a two-year school, and get out of there debt-free. Favorite subject? It's not PE. Because I didn't like to sweat in PE. Because then you have to shower again. And I have bad hair. So I don't really think lunch. I was not a good student. Well, this is the first school um, get together that we have done, and I don't. That's why I think it's amazing what Mr. Reed has done. I don't. I don't know if this is going to happen again because to get to get almost all the candidates here to talk to you, uh, seventh and through twelfth grade individuals, is tough to do. So I applaud Southern Valley School District for doing this. But my guess this may be the only one we do. Most memorable moment while playing sports. Well, um, and I, I'm 40 something, 48, 49, 1987. We went to the state basketball tournament and we ended up winning the state class B basketball championship in 1987. So that would be my most memorable moment. Um, what are some of the issues of our district? And how do you fix them? What are some of the issues of the district and how do we fix them? Government regulation is a huge issue uh, going on in the state, in the third district as well. We need to get the government off our back. I think we're doing some of that. Mr. Trump has been able to sign some executive orders to get rid of the regulations. I had OSHA walk into our door for the first time ever 
during the Obama administration, and uh, they haven't came back since, which is good. If we need lower taxes, even though our taxes got cut the first of the year, they can be lower. We are spending way too much in Washington, D.C. Those are the two big ones. What's your favorite food? How about this? Favorite food? Anybody here gluten intolerant? Can't have wheat, barley, or rye? Ah, nobody. That's me. Uh, so I don't get to go to Pizza Hut and eat pizza. You ever hear of celiac? About 10 years ago, I got dinged with celiac disease, which doesn't allow me to eat like a loaf of bread that you get at the store. So you have to have special bread. Can't go to Pizza Hut and eat pizza. You have to have special pizza. So my special, my favorite meal is roast potatoes and gravy. Hopefully there's not another celiac in here. When you were younger, what did you want to do? I wanted, I signed all my sixth grade papers, Kirk Pro Penner, because I was going to be a professional basketball player. <laughs> and I still talk to my sixth grade teacher, he laughs at me. What's your favorite candy? My favorite candy? <laughs> um, Rolos. Is that a good one? So, um, so if Trump doesn't have enough money for Wall Street, you just see some drug cartel people? Trump has enough money for the wall. Uh, we, we spend billions of dollars that we don't know where it's going. But yeah, you could use C's drug cartel money. That would be good. But there's money. They don't want to admit it. There's money. And it's only $25 billion that we're going to What's your favorite movie? <laughs> My favorite movie. What's your favorite movie? This is what I watch most of the time when I go to bed. My wife is a huge Star Wars fan. Okay, so... I've seen Star Wars, I've seen every version of Star Wars at least 100 times before I've fallen asleep. So I will say Star Wars since my wife was not even about that. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. See, I don't understand that. I don't, I don't understand that movie at all. But I hear it's good. Uh, what do you think about Mike Riley? What do I think about Mike Riley, former football coach in Nebraska? Nice to have Scott Frost, isn't it? <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> oh, uh, how do you think you can help with the college cuts, like in the and they cut some of the sports events because they didn't have enough money for it? How do you think you can help with that? It's kind of as generally a state issue uh, that's coming from the state. So, I, from a federal standpoint, I know there's some federal money that's going to some universities. We need to be able to educate our kids. Um, we're having a little issue with revenue in the state due to the down farm economy. Uh, so they're having to look, look at some cuts to see what's better. I understand the baseball program is doing it was self-funded, um, but they're still cutting that, so I don't quite understand that. But we all, I don't like it, but we all have to when the economy's down, we all have to tighten up, and that means everybody. But they're pretty deep and drastic at you and right now, and you and now. So, um, but it's a state revenue issue. What is your middle name? Alan. <laughs> Defense? Yeah, I, I don't play defense. I would not be able to play for him. <laughs> Offense wins championships. Defense has never scored a bucket. <laughs> yes, sir. But why do you actually 
local people have a better idea what's going on in the local community, in your local school, than some bureaucrat in Washington, D.C. And I sit on the school board in Aurora, and I have a better understanding of what's going on in Aurora Public School than some guy or, or lady sitting in Washington, D.C. telling you what to do. You have a better idea of your life than I have of your life. So you know what's best for you. Okay? Social issues. I'm a red state Nebraska conservative. I am pro-life, Second Amendment. I, anything, I'm not going to differ from my opponent on that, my Republican opponent, my Democrat opponent, my man, but I'm an evangelical and uh, faith family and everything else. So I'm anti-abortion. What am I going to do for land taxes? I can't do a thing. But I will tell you this. I've been on the Lord's school board for 13 years. And we actually cut our school budget before the teachers get mad at me. We cut $500,000 this year. Didn't cut a program. Didn't cut anything. But our budget was like $13 million. We got it down to $12,500,000. $12, it's never been done in 13 years that I've been uh, on the Lord's school board. We were able to do it. So, that leads into the property tax question. Farmers are getting slaughtered by property taxes, we all know it. And my statement for the last probably 10 years is until the property tax gets spread and away from the farmer and rancher onto all of us, because I'm not a farmer and rancher, then we'll never get a hold on property taxes. Because it's only a curtain, a small, it's only hurting a small few that own all the land in the third district. Plus, it's an East versus West issue. Omaha and Lincoln don't want any change so they get all the money from the West since we're all, we all don't get state aid anymore because our property taxes are too high. But low property taxes would spur this economy. Um, hello, my name is James, and I was wondering if it was a bit different question, but being a kind of member of the LGBT community, it's important for me how you are going to make not only me but like different transgender Americans or anybody else who's really falling into that category, how important you're going to make our voices and what you're going to do to help us as well. You have the rights just like everybody else in this room. And that's how I handle that. Here one more time for Mr. Bennett. I'd like to go to seven and eight periods to remain, but nine through twelve, you can go to seventh period. Seventh period. Thanks for coming out.